Hi, Bobcats. In this video, the last one from chapter 12, we are going to look at another fairly unique type of diagram that's known as a PT phase diagram. Like the uh, heating curves and cooling curves, these have very distinctive shapes, and you'll be expected to know what state of matter is present in each of these different regions on a standard phase diagram, uh, even if it's not labeled with the states of matter. Our objectives are to define, describe, and interpret phase diagrams, and to predict phase changes from changes in temperature and or pressure by reading them off of um, these phase diagrams. This phase diagram is for carbon dioxide, CO2. Um, the vertical axis is showing us pressure that's where the P and PT phase diagrams come from. Comes from. Uh, the horizontal axis is temperature. That's the T in PT phase diagrams. And um, so at a, any given temperature and pressure, this diagram will tell you what state of matter is present. If we are somewhere in the green region, the state of matter will be a solid. If we're somewhere up in the purple region, the state of matter would be a liquid. And if we're somewhere in this tan region, the state of matter would be a gas. So if we're looking at this line segment that connects the solid phase with the gas phase, um, the, the line segment itself, or the, the curve, um, represents either sublimation or deposition, depending on which direction you're moving. Um, if we look at this line segment that connects the solid phase and the liquid phase, um, if we move one direction, that would be melting. If we move the other direction, it would be freezing. And then if we're talking about the, the line segment that's connecting the liquid with the gas, uh, that would be uh, boiling or vaporization in one direction and condensation in the opposite direction. We also have two special points. One of them here is called the triple point. The triple point is this one point where all three phases are in stable equilibrium. It means all it's perfect perfectly stable for all three phases to exist. Um, then the other point I want to mention is this end point up here. This curve really does end at this point. And if you move to temperatures and pressures above this point, we get kind of a different state of matter. Um, so this point is known as the critical point. And if you go to temperatures and pressures higher than this, you have something that's called a supercritical fluid. We'll see more about that shortly. I'd like for you to take a moment and watch this triple point of CO2 video. Um, he does a pretty good job explaining of what's going on. Um, once he pulls out the heat gun and he starts heating up the sample, you might want to fast forward to 2 minutes and 20 seconds because uh, it takes a little while to get to that point. So if you go to temperatures and pressures that are above the critical point on that PT phase diagram, you get this thing called a supercritical fluid. It's sort of like a liquid and it's sort of like a gas. Uh, CO2 in particular as a supercritical fluid um, is uh, used as a solvent. Uh, it's used for things like decaffeinating coffee and it is potentially um, infinitely reusable. Um, it is a um, much more environmentally friendly solvent than most uh, of the solvents that are used for things um, like decaffeinating coffee. So there's a, a lot of potential, a lot of research in using supercritical fluids as solvents. Um, I've got a link here to a video I think it's kind of cool because you very clearly see the formation of a supercritical fluid. Um, you, you very clearly see the liquid turn into a supercritical fluid. Um, but I have to issue the warning, don't try this at home. Um, I like this video, but the guy who is doing it is doing this like in his garage. Um, and he's working with high temperatures and high pressures. That combination could mean an explosion if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so please, don't try this at home. 
All right, so what types of questions and things am I going to ask you off of PT phase diagrams? Okay, first of all, I might give you a blank diagram like this. There probably would be numbers on the axes so that you could read specific temperatures and pressures off of it, um, but I might not label the phases. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is identify where the solid, the liquid, and the gas are in this diagram. Now, um, and I'm going to say something that some people might find a little off color, so I apologize in advance if I am going to um, embarrass anybody by saying this. But um, this, I drew this with line segments because that was the easiest thing to do on the computer. But generally speaking, these diagrams look a little bit more like this. They tend to be curves. And if you're looking at the diagram I just sketched in, you'll understand where what I'm about to say comes from. This type of diagram is sometimes referred to as the butt cheek diagram. And so if we're considering this to be a butt cheek diagram, um, imagine that you just passed gas. And guess what? The gas is out here in this region. Then that means that the two cheeks must be solid and liquid. And the horizontal axis is temperature. So the cooler temperatures are going to be the solid phase, and the uh, warmer temperatures will be the liquid phase. So put it, filling that in down here on my uh, computer drawn uh, diagram, we have a solid, we have a liquid, and we have a gas. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I ask you questions about this on a quiz or a test, I might give you a temperature and a pressure that is in this region, like about here. And I'll say, okay, if we start here and we change to a temperature and a pressure that is over here, what phase transition just took place? All right, so we moved from the gas phase to the solid phase. That would be known as deposition, to go directly from gas to solid without going through the liquid phase. Or I might ask you uh, what phase transition happened uh, if we went from this point to this point. So in this case, we have a liquid turning into a gas, so that would be vaporization or boiling. And every once in a while, I'll throw on something like this. If we start at this point and we end up at this point, what phase transition took place? Um, I throw that on there just to be a stinker because there is no phase transition. It's just checking to see if um, you really are paying attention or not. The phase diagram that I showed you before for CO2 is the standard type phase diagram that you'll see in general chemistry. But I wanted to throw this one in here to show you that um, that's not the end of the story. Phase diagrams can be much, much more complicated. In this case, this is the phase diagram for carbon. And carbon has two crystalline solid forms. Uh, one of them is known as diamond, and the other one is known as graphite. And so in um, this phase diagram, we're seeing that there are um, there's more than one solid phase present. Uh, diamond also has an allotrope that's known as lonstellite. So there, there are lots of other uh, possibilities here. If you look at something like steel or various other metals, um, those phase diagrams very quickly get very complicated as at different temperatures and pressures the atoms rearrange to different crystal structures in, in the solid form. So uh, phase diagrams can be much more complicated if you're going into anything um, like engineering, mechanical engineering that requires knowledge of the strength of materials under different operating conditions, you always have to consult your phase diagrams. Um, there was a group of ships that were built during World War II, known as the Liberty Ships, I believe, um, that were great when they were built in the um, 
the shipyards in the United States where the temperatures were nice and warm. And then when they got into the super cold uh, waters um, of the Atlantic up farther north and up into the, the North Sea and areas like that, the steel that was used underwent a phase transition and became very brittle and not strong at all. And big sections of the hulls cracked due to the, the cold temperature. So it's always really important for applications like that um, that you consult your phase diagram and you're sure that your materials are good over the entire operating conditions of your um, application. So let's take this carbon phase diagram and do a couple of practice questions. The first one says, what phase transition takes place if the pressure is held constant at 0 0.05 gigapascals and the temperature is increased from 2,000 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin? Okay, I'm guessing that some of y'all got stuck back here at gigapascals because that's kind of a weird pressure unit. So just for a frame of reference, one atmosphere is 0 0.0001 gigapascals. Uh, so a gigapascal is a really, really big pressure unit. Even 0 0.005 gigapascals is a very high pressure. Okay, so we're talking 0 0.005 gigapascals, which will be somewhere down, oh, I forget how these logarithmic scales work, but uh, somewhere around in here. And um, let's see, the temperature is going to start at 2000, which would be about here, and it's going to increase to 6000. So in that case, we're going to have graphite, which is a solid transitioning to the vapor phase. And so we have a solid turning into a vapor, so that's going to be sublimation. The next question wants to know what phase transition occurs at 6,000 Kelvin if the pressure is increased from 10 gigapascals to 500 gigapascals. So at 6,000 Kelvin, if we start at about 10 gigapascals, we're about here in the liquid region. And if we move up to 500 gigapascals, we'll be somewhere up here in the diamond region. So we just made diamonds. Um, so that's going to be the liquid turning into a solid. Uh, that would be known as freezing. Okay. Um, yeah, so any of these types of questions are fair game. Um, I might throw in uh, some sort of a particle level description, um, the, something about the state of matter where the particles are close to one another and don't move, um, you know, just trying to combine concepts with things that you already know, just giving um, kind of a, a more roundabout way of trying to say something like solid. Our objectives were to define, describe, and interpret phase diagrams, and then to predict phase changes from, phase, from changes in temperature and or pressure by using these phase diagrams.